Hi, this is Joe Chaffin, and this is a Blood Bank Guy Podlet, a 10-minute tutorial on dosing RH immune globulin to RH negative moms. We do this for a couple of reasons. First, it's a very commonly asked question on standardized exams, and second, it's vitally important that we get this right in the real world. Unfortunately, we have some pretty good evidence that we're not getting it right often enough. This article published in the Archives of Pathology and Lab Medicine in 2009 showed that of these nearly 1,600 laboratories that they surveyed, 20 to 30 percent of those labs were underestimating the necessary dose of RHIG, and that's very bad. The reason is that RHIG acts in this context to prevent the formation of anti-D in D-negative or RH-negative moms. Just for clarity, I will say D negative from now on, it's the same thing as RH negative, I hope you know that. So hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn is the major consequence of forming an anti-D, and here's how HDFN works. Basically we have a D positive mom, sorry, D positive dad, D negative mom, uh, a baby who is D positive at the time of delivery primarily can give what's known as a fetal maternal hemorrhage. In other words, baby red cells leaking into mom's circulation. When that happens, mom has about a 16% chance, if we do nothing else, of making an anti-D, and that anti-D can cross the placenta with the next pregnancy and do great damage to a future baby's D-positive red cells. So with RH immune globulin, which is nothing more than just a very concentrated solution of anti-D itself, it is designed to act at the fetal maternal hemorrhage stage. In other words, at the stage where baby red cells could be leaking into mom's circulation, and it's designed to put a stop to mom recognizing those D positive cells and forming the antibody. It's kind of unclear exactly how it works, but that's the general idea. Please note that it's not just Rogam. People say Rogam all the time when they mean RHIG, but there are a lot of different names. You see them there. In addition, Rogam and the other forms are typically dosed as what we call a vial. And a vial, V-I-A-L, is just um, one standard dose of RHIG. It can come in, in, in pre-filled syringes like this, or it can come in regular, just standard vials. Um, bottom line with this is that one full-dose vial in the United States contains 300 micrograms of RHIG or 1,500 international units, and that is sufficient to protect against 30 cc's of D-positive blood or 15 cc's of D-positive red cells. Keep that number in mind. You're going to see that again. It's a very important calculation, a number to use in the calculation. We do, the, we do RH immune globulin for RH negative moms both before and after birth, and that's important to remember. The standard uh, prenatal care for an RH negative mom is to give a D negative mom one vial of RHIG at 28 weeks gestation. That takes her risk from, if we did nothing, delivering a D positive baby from 16%, actually all the way down to 1%. So that 28 week dose knocks it down to 1%. We, had, in addition, give RHIG postpartum, a D negative mom who delivers a D positive or D variant baby gets at least one vial of RHIG, generally within 72 hours. In fact, it should be within 72 hours, but still give it if you're beyond 72 hours. That postpartum dose takes the risk all the way down to 0.1%. So you need both to, to have the most effect in a D-negative mom. Fundamentally, what we have to ask and what this talk is about is deciding, do we give one vial of RHIG postpartum or more than one vial? We determine that generally through the use of a fetal blood screen, a fetal bleed screen. The fetal bleed screen is designed to answer that question. And if a fetal bleed screen is negative, it's simple. Mom gets one vial of RHIG, that happens 99% or so of the time, and everybody moves along with their lives. However, if the fetal bleed screen is positive, indicating a larger fetal maternal hemorrhage, then we need to do a quantitative test. We'll come back to the quantitative in just a second, but let's look right now at the fetal bleed screen. It looks like this. Basically, we have mom cells and baby cells on this slide, but we can't see baby cells. They're highlighted in yellow, but unfortunately, we can't see them that obviously, so we add anti-D, which binds to those D-positive cells, doesn't agglutinate them. We need the indicator D-positive red cells to form rosettes around the individual D-positive cells through that interaction with the antibodies. And they look like this. You count the number of rosettes that you see. If you see three or more generally in nine or 10 microscopic fields, that 
get, tells you that the fetal bleed screen is positive and you move along from there to do a quantitative test. The quantitative test is typically the kleihauer betke but also flow cytometry is used and the idea behind that is to determine the exact dose of postpartum RHIG to give. The kleihauer betke works like this. Hemoglobin F is acid resistant but the hemoglobin A is not. So you make a peripheral smear, flood the slide with acid, and mom cells which contain hemoglobin A will fade. As the hemoglobin A is eluded off, the red cells go pale, the hemoglobin F baby cells stay positive. Positive, you count 2,000 cells total and determine the percentage of cells that are bright, just like you see on this slide. You use that calculation or use that percentage to move on and determine the calculation and determine exactly how many vials of RHIG to give. This is most commonly done using the method that's outlined in the AABB technical manual. In the tech manual, basically what it talks about is calculating fetal hemorrhage by multiplying the kleihauer betke percentage as a percentage. In other words, if the percentage is 12, or sorry, 1.2, then you would use 0 0.012. Multiplying that times the maternal blood volume, which we assume to be 5,000 cc's in the tech manual method, and that gives you the volume of baby blood. So 1.2 in our example, 0 0.012 times 5,000 equals 60 cc's or 60 ml's of baby blood. From there, we use that number to calculate the number of RHIG vials to give. And to do that, we have to remember what I told you before, that there are 30 cc's, sorry, that one vial of RHIG protects a, a D-negative mom from 30 cc's of D-positive baby blood. So you take that baby ML 60 cc's divided by 30 cc's per dose, and obviously you get a dose of 2.0 vials of RHIG. Keep that number in mind, we're gonna come back to it. That's not the total number that we're gonna give. A, a resident of mine a number of years ago discovered, just looked at the math, and, it, and it's really clear that there's an easier way to do that. You'd simply take the kleihauer betke or the flow cytometry percentage just as a number um, and multiply that by 5, divide it by 3, and that gives you that same RHIG dose. So let me show you. That 1.2% that I showed you before, don't do 0 0.012, just do the number. 1.2 times 5, that's 6. Divide 6 by 3, that gives you that exact same dose of 2.0 vials. A, a much shorter, much easier, and again, assumes a maternal blood volume of five liters or 5,000 cc's. That five stands for mom's blood volume in liters. Now moving on, again, as I said before, that two is not the number that we're gonna give because we always want to give a safety factor. We know that the kleihauer betke is imprecise and it doesn't reproduce well, so we always round up after the calculation based on the first decimal. In other words, if the, first, if the number just to the right of the decimal point when we do our calculation is zero through four, we're gonna round up once and give the next whole number vials of RHIG. If the number to the right of the decimal is five through nine, we're gonna round up twice and give two additional doses. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if the calculation, as in our problem here, came out at 2.0, we're gonna look at that zero, um, to the number to the right of the decimal, we're gonna round up one time to the next whole number of vials, 3.0 vials. Um, if the number is 2.2, if the number is a two to the right of the decimal, again, round up once, give three vials. 2.5, that five tells you, okay, we've gotta move up and we're gonna round up twice and actually give four vials of RHIG, and 2.9 obviously would lead to giving a, a four vials as well, round up twice. I hope you understand this. this is very important. Rewind this part of the, the talk if you didn't get it, because you got to understand this rounding, because I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. Okay, so back to the short method. If mom's blood volume is not five liters, then we've got some additional work to do. Um, in other words, if you're told mom's weight in a problem or in real life, you simply take the weight in kilograms and estimate mom's blood volume, multiplying that weight in kilograms times 70. And then you use that blood volume rather than five in our calculation uh, to get the RHIG dose. So for example, if mom is only weighs 60 kilograms, so that if you multiply 60 times 70, her blood volume is 4.2 liters, you use four 4.2 rather than 5 and you come out with 1.7 vials. You should also know um, that the, the College of American Pathologists has been very concerned about people dosing RHIG properly, so they've come out with a, with a calculator that you can download directly from the College of American Pathologists website, that's cap.org. In the, in the RHIG dose calculator, it's just an Excel spreadsheet that starting off assumes that mom's blood volume is five liters, 5,000 cc's. If, in other words, if we plug that in and we just plug in the percentage of fetal bleed, it's gonna give us that same three dose, uh, three dose 
uh, three vial dose that I talked about before. However, if you know mom's height and weight, you get a more accurate calculation of mom's blood volume. In this case, the 1.2% still ends up with three full dose vials, but it may not. It is certainly a more accurate way to do it, and I would recommend that you check that out. But whatever you do, be consistent. Make sure everyone involved knows what they're doing. Make sure that this is clearly outlined in your procedures and understand who's responsible for this, and that usually comes back to the pathologists that are ultimately responsible. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope this was useful for you. Let me know if it is. Take care.